Hello and welcome. So in today's uh, video, we will talk about how to identify an outlier during out of specification investigation. See, this is one of the challenge I often see people face while investigating an OS. So if you look at the US FDA uh, guideline on to the investigation of out of specification or even the guidelines given by the EMA, you will find that both of them, both of them mention of the outlier test. So regulators recognize that the analyst may come across outlier test result and that has to be investigated properly based on to the statistical evaluation. Now when they say statistical evaluation, the details of how one can reach to a conclusion whether the given measurement is really an outlier or not is not well explained into the guideline. So that is the purpose of uh, making this video so that you all can get an understanding how one can identify an outlier during out of specification investigation. So. <clears throat> So this is the test that is called as the Diane's uh, Q test and uh, Diane's Q test will help us to understand an outlier within the given number of measurement. So I will walk you through very step by step slowly so that you can understand identification of an outlier during an OS investigation. So it is not something uh, that there is no at all a guidance provided about understanding an outlier but there is a usp general chapter 111 where you will find that the diane's q test is mentioned in identifying the outlier test result so this test allows examining if observation from a small set of replicate observations typically in between 3 to 13 can be legitimately rejected or not. Rejected means what? If it founds to be an outlier, then you can certainly reject that observation or the measurement. And this particular test is much applicable, reliable, typically for the number of observation between 3 to 13. But then the question is how this Q test is really applied to identify an outlier. Let us understand step by step. Number one, the n values comprising the set of observation under examination are arranged in ascending order. So for example, you are conducting a, uh, an assay and as a part of your measurement, you're supposed to uh, measure sample in triplicate. So you need to arrange these assay values in ascending order means what? In the increasing order. So the lowest assay value, let us say 99%. Then the next value, let us say 100%. And then the highest value, let us say 101%. So this is called as the arranging the values in the ascending order. So you need to first arrange all your measurements in the ascending order. So once you make the arrangement then the second important step is the statistic experimental q value that is q experiment or qxp is calculated by below formulas so in the next slide i will explain you uh, the calculation of the q experiment or q experimental value for the given set of measurement so if the sample size is in between three to seven that means your measurements, if they are 3 or 7, then uh, you have to calculate the Q experiment with this calculation formula. That is X2 minus X1 divided by Xn minus X1 is going to give you the smallest outlier. The smallest means what? See, in observation, let us say you have N number of observations. So there are possibility that either your uh, first observation, the smallest observation is going to be an outlier or maybe the highest observation is going to be an outlier. In between observation, they will not be outlier. Outlier means what? Observation 
lying on the border. Border means what? They can be either smaller value or the higher value. So there are two calculation formulas. The first calculation formula that I have just explained you for understanding the smallest possible outlet. So if your sample set or measurement contain the smallest outlet, then this particular calculation formula is going to give that. Similarly, the largest outlayer can be calculated with this calculation formula xn minus xn minus 1 divided by xn minus x1. You can note down the calculation formulas or you can take the screenshot so that we will have this calculation formula with you. Now, this is for the sample size of between 3 to 7. But in case if your sample size is greater than 7, can the same calculation formula apply? No. Then there is a calculation formula given for the sample size for 8 to 10. And you can note down the smallest outlier calculation formula. Similarly, the largest outlier calculation formula. In case if your sample size is greater than 10, again you have to apply a different calculation formula which is given in the last now. The, if the sample size is between 11 to 13, then you can apply these two calculation formulas to calculate the smallest outlet as well as the largest outlet. I hope you are clear until this particular step. Then the next step is what? The obtained Q experimental value. Right? You understand the calculation formulas now. And by using those calculation formulas, now you are going to calculate the Q experimental values. So once you obtain the Q experimental value, then it is compared to a critical Q value which is called as a Q critical found in the table. So I will let you know what is the Q critical values and this critical value should correspond to the confidence interval we have decided to run the test. See each measurement is always done with a certain degree of confidence interval. You must have heard about people speaking 95% confidence or 99% confidence or 90% confidence. So, so this particular value is reported with a 95% confidence interval value. That is the connection as mentioned over here. So always relate your confidence interval with the Q critical. Q critical is dependence on to the confidence interval. That means if your confidence interval is different, then you can have the different Q critical value. So let me bring the Q critical value very soon. But before that, once you have the Q critical value, then if Q experimental value is greater than Q critical value, then the suspect value can be characterized as an outlier and can be rejected. If not, the suspect value must be retained and used as I, I, I must be used in all subsequent calculation that indicates that if the Q experimental value if it is greater than the Q critical value then you can reject that value saying that it is an out layer but if the Q experimental value is less than Q critical value then you cannot reject that value because that stands not an out layer and you must use that value for subsequent calculation. I hope you understand on this very important point. And then again, this is the, the table which mentioned the Q critical values. And you will find this Q critical values given in the USP general chapter 111. And this Q critical value belongs to the 99% confidence interval. So if you are going to define the uh, outliers corresponding to the 90% confidence interval, then this particular values won't apply. Or even if you consider to calculate the critical values with respect to 95% confidence interval, then this table will not apply. So please remember this point that this particular Q critical values are with the 99% confidence interval. So you can find that these are the confidence interval values. So G1, G2, G3, they are nothing but the, the Q critical values with respect to 
the number of measurement for example if the number of measurements are 3 then what is your q critical value 0.988 understand if your number of measurements are 4 then what is the q critical value it is 0.889 similarly what is the q critical value in case of your number of measurements are 13 you can see over here right the number of measurement are 13 your q critical value is 0.615 so i hope you are clear on this very important information so before we move on to the example i would like to your kind attention that you know there are more than 1000 pharma professionals who have chosen pharma growth hub as their career acceleration partner i am the founder of pharma growth hub and I am on the mission to help pharma professionals to boost their career growth by providing absolute clarity on various topics by creating an ecosystem where professionals can network and help each other to identify new opportunities. So in case if you are finding a stagnancy into your career growth, not able to understand how to identify the new job opportunities, there is a way to go. So there is an opportunity to become a lifetime member of the Pharma Growth Hub with never before offer. If you are interested, please check the details given in the description below and join Pharma Growth Hub today. Thank you so much. So let us understand uh, the calculation of or identification of an outlier with a very simple example. And you can see example onto your board. So let us say you have three different assay values with the 49.9 mg first observation, 59.8 mg second observation and 49.8 mg as the third observation. So you want to understand whether there is any outlier value within these three different measurement. And you are going to consider this uh, outlier measurement with the 99% confidence interval value. So please remember there is a great use connection of this confidence interval. What is the step number one? Arrange these values into an ascending order, means in the increasing order. So I have arranged all them into the increasing order. And then again, there is a step number two that determine the Q experimental value. So by using the, now as this number of measurement are three, I hope you remember I have shown you the calculation formulas for Q critical values. So by using that calculation formula, I have, I have calculated the Q experimental, Q experimental for the smallest value, right? That is the Q experimental one. I just uh, notified that with the different notification so that I can differentiate what is Q experimental one and Q experimental two. So Q experimental two is the Q experimental value for the highest uh, the outlet possible value. So I understand that now the Q experimental 1 is 0 0.010 and the Q experimental 2 is 0 0.990. In the step number 3, now I need to compare the Q experimental value with the Q critical values. And what is the source of the Q critical value? Do you remember that table? Same table I will consider. And let us say that you know. The Q critical values with the three measurements with 99% confidence interval is how much? Is 0.988. Is how much? 0.988. See, in the next step now, what I need to do is I need to compare whether my Q experimental value, one of these two Q experimental value is greater than the Q critical value. Why? Because if it is greater than the Q critical value, then I need to consider that value as the out layer. So I consider this, uh, the smallest one is 0 0.010. Anyway, it is not greater than my Q critical value. What about the, the, the highest uh, experimental value? It is 0 0.990. It is certainly greater than the Q critical value. Look at here, 0 0.990 is greater than 0.988. So, hence, the observation related to Q experiment 2, which is actually belonging to 59.8 mg, can be considered as an outlier or can be rejected.
So this is the way you can also conduct the statistical evaluation to understand and justify whether your observation is really an outlier. I hope you must have found the video useful. So in case if you are not yet subscribed to my channel, do consider subscribing the channel so that you will be able to receive such kind of very useful and informative videos. In case if you are interested to join the Pharma Growth Hub, as I explained, you can find the details, the joining details into the description below. Do consider joining today. Grab the offer. Thank you so much.